Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Virtual Planetarium Exploring Space, part of our MOS at Home programming. My name is Janine, my pronouns are she and her, and I'll be your moderator today. That means I'll be reading some of your questions and responses, which you can submit here in the Zoom meeting below using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. If you'd like to see captions during today's meeting, you can click on the closed captions button at the bottom of your screen and select show subtitles. And if you're joining us on Facebook or YouTube, we're so excited to have you here, but unfortunately, I'm unable to see your responses at this time. We're so delighted to have all of you here as our audience. Let's meet our flight crew for today's journey. Hello, everybody. My name is Talia. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm going to be your presenter today, which means I'm going to be doing the talking. And boy, am I going to be doing a lot of it. And helping me out with all of this by providing visual support is... Hello, I'm Katie. My pronouns are she and her, and I will be flying you around today and showing you some cool videos. So you are here in week three of our Mars month here on our virtual planetarium live stream. And boy, is this a big one because, uh, you know, it's been a pretty big week for Mars so far. Um, last week, we had a new two new spacecraft enter orbit around Mars, the first uh, Martian orbiters for both China and the United Arab Emirates. But the big show for me is coming up the day after tomorrow on Thursday, because that's when Perseverance is going to land on Mars. This is NASA's newest Mars rover. And it's been on its way for quite a while. It launched all the way back on July 30th. And we can go ahead and show you what that looked like. It was uh, a pretty big day because you know there's a lot of pressure. You want these launches to go right because the mission can fail right at the beginning if something goes wrong with the launch. But on July 30th, 2020, uh, I'm pleased to say Perseverance had a nice smooth launch from Cape Canaveral down in Florida, which started it on its journey. Now getting to Mars takes between six and 10 months, depending on exactly where the planets are relative to each other. We like to launch missions every uh, two years or so, because that's when the planets are, planet Mars and planet Earth are uh, relatively close together in their orbits. And so that's when we're gonna have the shortest travel time. So for instance, there was uh, another rover that was supposed to launch um, from the European Space Agency. Due to the craziness of 2020, it wasn't finished in time. And so it's going to have to wait two years till 2022 for it to launch. But its perseverance is almost there. It's going to arrive, like I said, uh, just about 48 hours from now, just over 48 hours from now. Um, it's going to get there in the afternoon of Thursday, February 18th. It's going to land in Jezero Crater. So this is going to be kind of a, a nerve wracking sequence when this uh, spacecraft goes in to land. And that's because landing on Mars is really, really hard. There is actually a very high failure rate for spacecraft that have tried to land on Mars. Uh, NASA has tended to be pretty, has a pretty good success rate with landing on Mars, but you know, Landing on Mars is really hard for a couple of reasons. It doesn't have much atmosphere, so a parachute can't slow you down, but for instance, it's got too much atmosphere for you to just ignore, so you can't just use rockets to go all the way down. You have to come up with a different way, a combination of ways to get to the surface. Now, up until uh, around 2012, we had a very specific way we liked to get things onto the surface. and uh, to demonstrate this, I'm going to show you a landing, or Katie's going to show you a landing animation from one of the uh, sort of older generation of rovers, which we called the Mars Exploration Rovers. You may have heard their names, uh, Spirit and Opportunity. These guys landed in 2004. And first, you have to pass through the atmosphere. Like I said, you can't just ignore the atmosphere. There's too much of it for that. So you need a heat shield to protect the spacecraft. And then once through that, you need to slow down. So you use a parachute. But again, the parachute isn't 
going to slow you down enough. There's not enough atmosphere on Mars for a parachute to slow you down all the way. So what everything prior to 2012 used was a very interesting method. The spacecraft itself would be lowered away from the parachute like this. And then here comes my favorite part. It would puff up like a giant popcorn, at which point it will get release and bounce. At the center of that is a very, very expensive spacecraft. <laughs> this is how um, the Mars Pathfinder landed. This is how Spirit and Opportunity landed. It's how the Beagle 2 lander came down. This is how everything came down on Mars. It literally bounced to the surface before eventually coming to a rest, at which point the airbags deflated and then the, that shell would open up and reveal the actual spacecraft inside, hopefully safe after its nice bouncy landing. This had to change in 2012 with the landing of Curiosity, which, is the, which was the previous record holder for the heaviest thing we landed on Mars. It had to come up with a new way of getting down because it was so heavy, if it had tried to bounce to the surface, it would have just exploded the airbags and crashed. And so it had to use a different method and it's the same method that Perseverance is going to use. So let's go ahead and see what Perseverance is going to do. It starts off very similar because of course, it still has to deal with that atmosphere. So when Perseverance starts to approach Mars, it's going to be very similar to how Spirit and Opportunity did with the heat shield out to protect it from the atmosphere. This whole thing, by the way, has earned the nickname the seven minutes of terror because at this point, NASA can't do anything. If something goes wrong, there's nothing they can do. It takes too long to send a signal to Mars at this point. So by the time uh, the people here on Earth hear about whether or not uh, things are going okay during the landing, the rover is already on the ground or not. So here again is that first part, the spacecraft passing through that thicker beginning part of the atmosphere, um, the spacecraft tucked inside that shell. And then the next part is also pretty similar to what happened with the old rovers. You had to slow down using a parachute. Now here's where it starts to get a little different. Of course, again, the parachute's not slowing it down enough. So what uh, Curiosity did and what Perseverance is going to do is eventually, it's actually just gonna cut that parachute loose and get itself down to the surface. So there goes the heat shield and there goes the rover. <laughs> the rover is actually attached to a platform that has little rockets on it. And that's how it's gonna get most of the way left to the surface. This is called the sky crane. And what it means is you can't just rock it all the way down. It kicks up too much dirt and can damage the rover. So what this, platform, its hovering platform will do is actually lower the rover to the surface using what they call, like I said, the sky crane. And this is how the rover's finally going to get on the ground. This is, it worked well with Curiosity, so we know it can work back in 2012. And this is what Perseverance is going to be doing in 48 hours. It's a very nerve wracking process. It's a very complicated process, but this is how we got to get these big rovers down to the surface. So why are we sending it there in the first place? Well, there's a uh, Perseverance has a lot in common with the Curiosity rover. Its overall design is based on Curiosity, but it's got a lot of stuff that we've never sent to the surface before. We've got a lot of cool instruments that um, this rover has that no previous rover has had. So we're actually going to shift over to a look at uh, something that you can actually find on the Perseverance website. It is a 3D interactive rover. So this is what Perseverance looks like. And we're going to talk about a few different things. We're going to start with what's probably my favorite instrument on board, uh, which is Moxie. So this is the Mars in 
oxygen in situ, I can't remember what MOXIE actually stands for. It's a little box inside the rover. You can sort of see its blue outline there. And it is going to, it's an experiment to see if we can take the thin carbon dioxide atmosphere of Mars and use it to generate oxygen. Now, here, here's a question for you. Why do we want to find out if we can generate oxygen on Mars? Think about that and put your answer in the Q&A. If you don't have an answer, if you're just really not sure, you can always put question marks because one of the uh, most important things about science is knowing what you don't know and being willing to admit it. So think about why we might want to generate oxygen on the surface of Mars. We have lots of question marks and also maybe so we can live there. Yeah, that's a big thing. Like if we ever want to send humans to Mars, first of all, those humans are going to want to breathe and it's a lot easier and cheaper if we can make our own oxygen on Mars rather than bringing it from Earth. But a bigger one is those, those astronauts are going to want to come home and oxygen is actually needed for rocket fuel. We would need to make a lot more oxygen to fuel a rocket to send those astronauts home than we would to keep them breathing. So that's, sending all that from Earth is really hard and really expensive. And it would be so much better if we could just make our own on Mars. So that's what MOXIE is gonna test. Another cool one is a thing on the back of the rover. It's called RIMFAX. And what this is, is a, uh, a ground penetrating radar. So this is something that is going to look under the surface. Now go ahead and see if you can think why we would want to look under the surface of Mars. You can again put question marks if you're really not sure, but if you think about any, any reasons we might want to know what Mars looks like under the surface, at least in Jezero Crater, where Perseverance is going to be roaming. I have lots of answers of for water, looking for life. Um, maybe there's minerals there. We want to see what kind of minerals. Yeah, these are all great answers and they're all true. So one of the, the place where uh, Perseverance is going to be touching down, Jezero Crater, we think that was once a Martian lake. Uh, and we can see a lot from the surface. Like we've got um, spacecraft orbiting Mars that can get us really, really good views of the surface of Mars. But we actually don't know a whole lot about what's going on under the surface. We know there's interesting stuff down there. Some of our orbiters have been able to determine that there's probably underground lakes deep underground in certain places, but uh, it's gonna be really helpful to have something actually on the surface of Mars shooting down radar to see what's underneath and see what the underground layers look like. Because we can learn a lot about the history of a place by digging. We can't really dig on Mars, so we're gonna use radar instead. Uh, another thing that this rover has that no rover previously has had is actually microphones. Uh, it's going to record its own descent this is going to be the first time we're going to be able to hear what it sounds like when the rover comes to the surface. And it's also got, um, it's going to be listening for sounds on the surface once it's on the ground as well. This rover has also a whole, it's got a whole bunch of cameras on it, including the big ones that you can see sort of up at the top of the mast there. Looks like the rover's head. Uh, and two of those are interesting. The two sort of dark rectangles you can see um, under the top of the mast there, those are the nav cams. This rover to a certain extent can navigate itself autonomously without input from earth. Not a certain to not completely. It still needs somebody from earth, you know, helping it out, but more than any previous rover, this rover can plan its own route. It can sort of move forward, go up. There's a rock there. Can't go over that rock. And to a certain extent adjust itself. So that's something no previous rover has had quite had the capability of doing. And like Curiosity, it's got a big arm on its front, which in this uh, model is all curved up, curled up. Um, but this arm is useful for several things. It's useful for taking selfies. 
which Curiosity has made very popular. And, you know, it might just be, it might look cute, you know, oh, the rover's taking selfies, but it's also actually very helpful. Why, why do you think it would be very helpful for the rover to be able to take photos of itself? Again, it's really cute, but there is actually a reason behind it. Again, you can put question marks or if you can think of why it might be a good idea for the rover to be able to take photos of itself. I have a bunch of different good answers here. Christina wonders maybe if it's to make sure it isn't damaged. Emily says maybe to see its background. Um, then they can see how the rover is doing to show depth and perception. All true, all good answers, and they are all right. Mostly it's to keep an eye on how things on the rover are looking. Is it covered in dirt? Is, um, are the cameras clear or things like that? Uh, for instance, Curiosity actually sends their arm down and takes photos of its own wheels from time to time. So we can see how the wheels are looking. Um, kind of rough actually, they're, they're, you know, Martian terrain is rough. Um, but it's also so that you can see what the surroundings look like. And it's really kind of awesome just to be able to see the rover in the middle of its environment <clears throat> and see what it's surrounded by. So there's a number of ways that being able to take a picture of itself is useful. But that's not the only thing on the arm. The arm actually has a few different instruments on it, including uh, this is a one of my favorite examples of NASA's willingness to accept funny names for things, an instrument called Sherlock, like the detective, but without the K. And I don't even want to go into what Sherlock is an acronym for, but what this thing is going to be looking for is sort of organic compounds and things in the soil. And being on the arm means it can go actually out and down towards the dirt and actually examine rocks and the soil and look for, like I said, organic compounds and signs of past life. This is the first rover that we've sent to Mars with the specific mandate in its mission to look for signs of past life. Other rovers and other landers have looked for things like, oh, did water once flow here? Or, oh, what has the, you know, the climate change been like on Mars? But this rover is the first one specifically to be like, oh, was there life here on this spot? That's one of the reasons we picked Jezero Crater, because we think there was a lake there. We think there was once a lot of water. So that could be a good place for life to have existed. And Curiosity is going to, I'm sorry, Perseverance is going to look for that using partially the Sherlock instrument and the camera that goes with it. I kid you not, it's named Watson. Yeah. So those are a couple of the things that are on the arm. There's also one more thing. There's a lot of other stuff on uh, Perseverance. We don't have time, unfortunately, for me to go through everything on the rover. But there is one more thing I want to point out that the rover is carrying. And that's this little tiny chip sort of on its back end, uh, which they call the name chip. And it's actually covered in tiny, tiny etched versions of thousands of names. Before Perseverance launched, you could actually submit names to be etched onto this chip, which is being carried by the rover. And uh, I have particular fondness for this because uh, my niece's names are on that ship. So uh, my niece's names are on the surface of Mars as are the names of thousands of other people. Um, this is something NASA has done before. It did it with the InSight rover. There is a chip, a similar chip on the InSight rover that carries thousands of names. It's very likely it will do it for Martian spacecraft in the future. Now, one thing that this, uh, model of the rover doesn't have on it uh, is something that isn't technically part of the rover, um, is technically its own spacecraft. If you look down on the belly of this model rover, you can see that there's um, not really anything there. But when uh, Perseverance arrives on Mars, it is going to be carrying something on its belly, a totally separate craft 
And this is the thing I might be most singularly excited about. Uh, the thing that it's carrying on its belly is this little guy, the Mars Helicopter Technology Demonstration, which has the much cooler name, Ingenuity. Ingenuity is a little tiny helicopter. On Earth, it would weigh four pounds, but in Martian gravity, which is less, it only weighs one and a half pounds. And this little copter is going to become the first craft to fly through the air of another world, hopefully. It's a test of brand new technology. And in order to make its test flights, it's going to have to have survived the interplanetary flight, the entry and landing, and being deployed from the belly of the rover. But the hope is that it's going to be able to do uh, up to five test flights in the spring of 2021. So a few months after the rover landing. And in order to fly in that very, very thin Martian atmosphere, we actually have to, um, we actually had to, first of all, make it a very, very light craft. Like I said, only one and a half pounds on Mars. And the rotors have to be huge. They're four feet from tip to tip. And they spin way faster than the rotors on an Earth helicopter. But I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, that little thing flying through the air of Mars. So once again, that's all stuff that's going to be happening in the future. What's happening in 48 hours, two days from now, um, between 3.30 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday the 18th will be the landing of Perseverance. That's seven minutes of terror where it's going to hit the atmosphere, um, deploy its parachute, detach from its parachute, and sky crane down to the surface. And you can actually follow that landing here on MOS at Home. We're going to have a live stream following it. Um, and you can listen to some of our museum educators as we follow the progress of this rover. And hopefully it becomes the latest success story making its way down to Jezero Crater, which is, uh, we're actually looking at it. This is the region of Mars where Jezero Crater is. Katie's got us looking right at it. So this is where Perseverance is gonna be making its home. Uh, and I know I talked a whole lot there and I did it in enough time that we have time for questions, which is exciting because I hope you guys have some questions about this really cool rover that I can help answer. Faith, who is 10, would like to know, how did we get the names for the rovers? That is an excellent question. So for Perseverance, it was actually a naming contest. Perseverance, the name Perseverance was chosen. A lot of people, there were hundreds and I think thousands of submissions. They narrowed it down to 10 and they had people vote. Um, and Perseverance was the one that won. As was Ingenuity, the helicopter also got its name. Uh, Ingenuity was one of the runner up names for the rover. Uh, and so it got assigned to the helicopter instead. I personally, in that vote, voted for the name Tenacity uh, in honor of a previous rover opportunity, which survived for 15 years on the surface of Mars. It was a very tenacious little rover, but I really like the name Perseverance. And uh, it means that the, both the rover and the helicopter have cute nicknames because now they're Percy and Jeannie. I love the nickname, speak of all of our friends on Mars, our robotic friends. Um, so speaking of them, do they just leave the rovers on Mars? And a, another question is, can a, the rover take samples of Mars to bring back to Earth? Oh, I'm so glad that second question got asked. The answer is no, we are not bringing these guys home. They were never designed to come home. Uh, and all of our previous spacecraft that have gone to the surface of Mars, including the ones that crashed and didn't really do anything, they're all on the surface. So we don't bring these things home. We've never brought something back from Mars, but we really, really want to. It's one thing to study Martian rock remotely through the camera of a rover on Mars while you're on Earth. You can learn a lot that way, but not nearly as much as we could if we could get pieces of that Martian rock back to Earth and study it in person in a lab. So one of the things that Perseverance is going to do is collect samples and put them in these little tubes and leave them 
in a place where a future Mars mission, one that is only just being designed now, is going to travel to Mars, pick up these tubes that Perseverance prepared, and bring them back to Earth, where we can study them in person. This is a huge goal of planetary science. And actually the first step in, in achieving it is perseverance. So I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, Kimberly would like to know, how long does it take to make a rover? Ah, so it varies based on how complicated the rover is. Um, perseverance was quite complicated. It's been, it was first uh, proposed, I think back in, going to say 2015 or so that they were going to send another big rover to Mars in 2020 and they spent years building it but if you know there's complications on the way it can push things back that um, second rover that was supposed to launch this year for instance uh, it's called Rosalind Franklin after one of the pioneers in um, DNA research supposed to launch this year, but because of many things, including the pandemic, they didn't finish it in time, which means now there's another two years to work on it because it can't launch until 2022. So it takes years, even for a simple rover to get put together. How complicated it is, is going to add more time. Um, and we have questions about the colors of Mars, which are basically why is parts of our parts of Mars red and why are parts of it blackish? Excellent. So Mars, of course, we call it the red planet. It has a nickname uh, based on that color that you see very prominently. And that's actually rust. Um, there's a lot of iron on Mars. And in the past, at least, there was more oxygen in the atmosphere uh, that iron rusted. It's what happens when iron gets exposed to oxygen. So Mars is a rusty planet. All of that red is rust in the dirt. Now, not everything rusted. There's a lot of rock on Mars that didn't rust. It either wasn't exposed to oxygen at the time or it didn't have the high iron content. So it is what you're seeing as those dark blacker patches. That's just rock and dirt that doesn't have that high rust content. But as you can see, most of Mars is pretty rusty. All right, and I think that's all the questions we have time for. So I'll let you guys uh, say goodbye to everybody and thank you and all that good stuff. Bye everybody, thank you Bye, so everyone. much for your questions. All right, um, I do wanna thank all of you for joining us today. I'm so sorry we couldn't get to all of your questions. There were a lot of really good ones. Maybe you'll be inspired to do some research on your own and try to figure out some of those answers. Uh, if you enjoyed this program, you can find out what other programs the museum is has coming up by checking out our social media channels or visiting mos.org slash mos at home. If you enjoyed today's presentation and would like to support more programming like this, please visit engaged.mos.org slash welcome to support MOS at home. And thank you to everyone who has. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or live streams coming up. And today's program was produced using a bunch of NASA multimedia resources, which you can find at eyes.nasa.gov and mars.nasa.gov slash mars2020, which is the Perseverance website. Um, we hope you enjoyed today's program and that we'll see you again. Bye.